Welcome to Storytime with Miss Jenny. I bet you've heard the story about the three little pigs. You know, where the wolf comes and chases the pigs, and in the end, the pigs end up really just kind of killing the wolf. So, I have a new story for you. It's called The True Story of the Three Little Pigs. And it's a little different because it's told from a different person's voice, which you're going to find out about in a few minutes. But here we have The True Story of the Three Little Pigs by A. Wolf. Everybody ready? Okay, here we go. Everybody knows the story of the three little pigs, or at least they think they do. But I'll let you in on a little secret. Nobody knows the real story because nobody has ever heard my side of the story. I'm the wolf, Alexander T. Wolf. You can call me Al. I don't know how this whole big bad wolf thing got started. But it's all wrong. Here he, look, look, here he is. Maybe it's because of our diet. Hey, it's not my fault wolves eat cute little animals like bunnies and sheep and pigs. That's just the way we are. If cheeseburgers were cute, folks would probably think you were big and bad too. But, like I was saying, the whole big bad wolf thing is all wrong. The real story is about a sneeze and a cup of sugar. Here he is, sneezing, cup of sugar. This is the real story. Way back in Once Upon a Time, I was making a birthday cake for my dear old granny. I had a terrible sneezing cold and I ran out of sugar. Kind of a messy cook, don't you think? He's got kind of a mess going on here in his kitchen. So, I decided to walk down the street to ask my neighbor for a cup of sugar. Now, this neighbor was a pig. And he wasn't too bright, either. He had built his whole house out of straw. Can you believe it? I mean, who in his right mind would build a house of straw? Look at There it is, way back there in the... Way in the distance. So, of course, the minute I knocked on the door, it fell right in. I didn't want to just walk right into someone's house, so I called. Little pig, little pig, are you in? No answer. I was just about to go home without the cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake. That's when my nose started to itch. I felt a sneeze coming on. Well, I huffed. And I snuffed, and I sneezed a great big sneeze. What do you think happened? And you know what? That whole darn straw house fell down. And right in the middle of the pile of straw was the first little pig, dead as a doornail. He had been home the whole time. It seemed like a shame to leave a perfectly good ham dinner lying there in the straw. So I ate it. Think of it as a big cheeseburger just lying there. I was feeling a little better, but I still didn't have my cup of sugar. So I went to the next neighbor's house. Next neighbor. This neighbor was the first little pig's brother. He was a little smarter, but not much. He had built his house of sticks. I rang the bell on the stick house. Nobody answered. I called, Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? He yelled back, go away, wolf. You can't come in. I'm shaving the hairs on my chinny chin chin. I had just grabbed the doorknob when I felt another sneeze coming on. I huffed and I snuffed and I tried to cover my mouth, but I sneeze, a great big sneeze. And you're not going to believe it, but this guy's house fell down just like his brother's. When the dust cleared, there was the second little pig, dead as a doornail, wolf's honor. Now, you know how food will spoil if you just leave it out in the open? 
So I did the only thing there was to do. I had dinner again. Think of it as a second helping. And I was getting awfully full. But my cold was feeling a little better. And I still didn't have that cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake. So I went on to the next house. This guy was the first and second little pig's brother. Now he must have been the brains of the family because he had built his house out of bricks. I knocked on the brick house. No answer. I called, Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? And do you know what that little porker answered? You get out of here, wolf, and don't bother me again. Talk about impolite. He probably had a whole sack full of sugar. And he wouldn't give me even one little cup for my sweet, dear old granny's birthday cake. What a pig. I was just about to go home and maybe make a nice birthday card instead of a cake. When I felt my cold coming on, I huffed and I snuffed and I sneezed once again. Then the third little pig yelled, and your old granny can sit on a pen. Well, there's the pig. Here he is up here. Now, I'm usually a pretty calm fellow, but when somebody talks about my granny like that, I go a little crazy. When the cops drove up, of course, I was trying to break down the pig's door. And the whole time, I was huffing and puffing and sneezing and making a real scene. Here he is. He really is making a scene up there. The rest, as they say, is history. Big Bad Wolf. There he is, blowing and huffing and puffing. The news reporters found out about the two pigs I had for dinner. They figured a sick guy going to borrow a cup of sugar didn't sound very exciting. So they jazzed up the story with all of that huff and puff and blow your house down. And they made me the big bad wolf. That's it. The real story. I was framed. But maybe you could loan me a cup of sugar? <laughs>